Okay, uh, hi everyone. Welcome to the last video uh, in this series. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about uh, electromagnetism. Okay, and they are all together, I think there are nine questions, six questions. Okay, there are six questions on electromagnetism. We're going to cover them all. Uh, a lot of it is repeats uh, from what we have discussed previously, but we're still going to do it anyway. Lah. Okay, so the first question comes from Malacca. Diagram 10.1 shows a bar magnet attached to a trolley. Very interesting question. Trolley moves with a constant velocity and a smooth runway into the solenoid, which is connected to a galvanometer. Okay, and so uh, we find that uh, this is where we start to have the, <coughs> the, the, the zone. Okay, as I always say that whenever you approach a paper two question, you need to know which zone you need to be in. And the one that is very, very constantly uh, um, confused uh, by a lot of students is how to differentiate between electromagnetic induction okay, and the force on a carry current carrying conductor. The one, you know, so uh, first of all, when you talk about electromagnetic induction, you're talking about generator. Lah, okay, the main application of electromagnetic induction is generator. Manakala, the force on the current carrying conductor, the main application is motor because you want to produce a force. Okay, so force is on motor. Now, if you're given a situation, okay, generally, like if you're given a situation, how do you know whether this situation is involving electromagnetic induction or force? I think the main difference is you need to ask yourself, is there a power supply in the circuit? If there is no power supply, like in this case, you don't see a battery over here. Okay, all you see is a galvanometer. You don't see a battery. If you don't see a battery, most of most likely it's going to be electromagnetic induction. That's really the main difference between the force on the current carrying conductor. There has to be a battery there. Manakala EM induction doesn't, there's definitely no battery because you are producing the current, you're not providing current. Okay, that I think is the main difference. Now. Then of course we're talking when we're talking about force on the current carrying conductor, you're talking about Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, left hand rule. When the color EM induction, you're talking about Fleming's right hand rule. Okay, but together with EM induction, there is also Faraday's law. Okay, and Lenz's law. Ah, so this always comes together. Lah. Okay, so uh a very important thing is, again, which zone are we in? And in this case, we are in the electromagnetic induction zone. So most likely, the entire question is going to be about electromagnetic induction. So what is the meaning of electromagnetic induction? It is the production of induced EMF due to the cutting of magnetic flux. You can use induced current, okay? But uh, generally, induced EMF is the correct uh, terminology. Now, based on diagram 10.1, what happens to the pointer of the galvanometer when the trolley moves into the solenoid? Okay, so, of course, you need to know Lenz's law. In this case, you need to talk about Lenz's law. Okay, you need to explain your answer. So, uh, if you think about it, the north side is going to go in, P is going to become north in order to stop the north from coming in. And so, if P is north and Q is south, if you use your right-hand grip rule, okay, point towards the north, and if you look at it, <laughs> sorry, if you look at it, now you notice that the arrows are all going to be going downwards. Oh, sorry. The arrows are all going to be going uh, upwards, sorry. Okay, they're all going to be going upwards. So, you, I mean, the easiest way is to take the paper and face you. Okay, and then, uh, sorry, face you like this. Okay, so north is to the left. Lah. Okay, since north is to the left, your right hand grip rule, you notice that the fingers are pointing upwards. Okay, these fingers are pointing upwards. So, uh, when you do it all pointing upwards, it's going to flow this way. Okay, and so the galvanometer always points towards the direction where the current is coming from. Okay, so the galvanometer will point towards the left. Okay, let me see if I can find the explanation here. I think this is it. Yeah, the galvanometer points, uh, pointer deflects to the left. Why? When the north side of the magnet is pushed into the solenoid, the magnetic flux is cut. Okay, the induced EMF is produced and induced current flows. Direction of current is determined by using Lenz's law. Okay, now, this one, uh, this 
point number two and point number three is usually done together as a set. Whenever you're explaining electromagnetic induction, you have to talk about magnetic flux cut. Because the magnetic flux is cut, the induced EMF is produced, induced EMF produced, induced current flows. Always these three comes together. Of course, the question is, before the magnetic flux is cut, what causes the magnetic flux to be cut? That one is different uh, depending on the situation. And of course, lastly, if you talk about induced current flowing, the direction is used, determined using uh, Lenz's law or Fleming's right-hand rule, depending on uh, the situation again. Okay, but if you cannot remember everything, remember the order of the three points. Magnetic flux is cut, induced EMF produced, induced current flows. Okay, that is usually uh, the way which we will do it. Lah. Okay, so... Oh, sorry. Okay, so... Uh, diagram 10.2 shows an alternating current generator used to supply alternating current, okay, in this case. Now, characteristics of alternating current generator, everything is given there. The point of this is to produce a generator which can provide the highest induced current. So, of course, here we're talking about Faraday's law, okay, the applications of Faraday's law, how to produce a higher induced current. Now, one thing to remember is that if this statement is in the question, you cannot give this as an answer, as your reason. Okay, so you cannot say, oh, higher, higher induced current can be produced. Cannot. Okay, you have to find other ways to give, to give the, uh, the, the answer. So, magnetic field strength. Why is the magnetic field strength strong? Okay, so you can give the reason more magnetic flux uh, can be cut. Okay, this will be uh, this one lah. Okay, then of course the shape of the magnetic uh the shape of the magnet should be concave. Why? Because you will get a radial magnetic field. Okay, or the magnetic field is more focused than this to avoid the leakage of magnetic flux. Okay, another possible one avoid leakage okay of magnetic flux. Okay, the number of turns of the coil, again, should be more. Okay, for the same reason, okay, more magnetic flux can be cut. The diameter of wire on the coil should be big. Okay, big means bigger thickness. And when you talk about bigger thickness, we are talking about low resistance. Okay, diameter of the coil is big so that you can have low resistance. And then, of course, when you look at the table, you know that you want generator T. Again, don't forget to write the 10th mark. Okay, all four characteristics in the 10th mark. Okay. Next. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> now, diagram 10 by 3 shows a transformer with a bulb. Okay, at its output terminal. The bulb lights up with normal brightness. Now, usually, when we talk about transformer, we are thinking about two very important formulas. Number one, is the transformer formula VP over NP equals to VS over NS or VP over VS equals to NP over NS. And N refers to the number of turns. Okay, bilangan lilitan lah. The second formula, which is always very, always almost involved, is the power formula P equals to VI. Okay, so in this question, the first one is calculate the value of the output current. Okay, so since you're given the power, and uh, sorry, since you're given the power and the voltage, you can calculate the current using P equals to VI. Okay, so you get I equals to 2 amps. Determine the number of turns in the primary coil. Use the VPVS formula and you should be able to get NP equals to 3000. Finally, efficiency, also a very common question in transformer. Efficiency formula is uh, output power over input power times 100. Okay, of course, if you want to write the one on the left over here, okay, it's always uh, equals to efficiency. Lah. There's no real symbol for efficiency. Anyway, so the output power you've already counted is 24. Actually, not counted. It's given to you, 24. Input power is V times I. Okay, so you have the current, you have the voltage given in the question, so you can calculate the input power, which is 30. So 24 out of 30 times 100 will give you an 80%. Oh, sorry and 80% efficiency, okay? <coughs> Next question. So, this is from Negris in Milan. 10.1 shows a fish that is cooked by using an induction cooker. 
Okay, what is the meaning of electromagnetic induction? Already covered in the previous question. Based on the physics concept, explain how an induction cooker works. So once again, uh, we are, <laughs> we are, uh, we are, we are dealing with this. Uh, so one minute now. Huh? Okay, once again, we are dealing with this. So this is how an uh, induction cooker will work. Okay, so high frequency alternating current is produced in the coil. Okay, and this high frequency alternating current will produce a cutting of the magnetic flux. Okay, so sorry, cutting the cutting of magnetic flux uh, produces the cutting of magnetic flux. Okay, and then an induced EMF is produced. And, in, and as I said just now, uh, cutting of magnetic flux, induced EMF, induced current. But for electromagnetic induction, we have a slightly different thing. Uh, the induced current, yes, is induced current flows, but uh, we call it more of an eddy current, okay? Uh, because of the high alternating, uh, uh, high frequency alternating current. So instead of saying induced current, just tweak it a little bit and put the words eddy current flows because eddy current produces more heat, okay? So that's the fourth point. Eddy current produces the heat in order to cook the food, okay? So this will be the four points in this question. Next. Diagram 10.2 shows inside of the induction cooker. Okay, as you can see. So the specifications are given. Point of the, the purpose of our choice is to cook the food. Okay, actually it's for cooking the food efficiently. So once again, you cannot use these words in your answer. Okay, so uh, the top plate, you have a choice between ceramic and copper. We will choose ceramic because ceramic generally is a poor heat conductor. We want the cook. We want the food to cook nicely. Like we don't want it to be so, uh, you know, we, we don't want it to cook too fast, and we don't want the heat to dissipate out too fast. Also, okay, poor heat conductor doesn't mean it cannot conduct heat. Uh. it just conducts heat. It just conducts heat slower. Secondly, the material of the pan. Okay, the pan should be a ferromagnetic. This is very standard. A ferromagnetic pan will produce a higher eddy current, and so you can produce more heat. Okay. Thirdly. The coil wire, okay, twisted wire or single wire, of course you want to choose twisted wire because twisted wire is a longer wire that's twisted. Lah. Okay, so it's more wire. More wire means you have high resistance. And remember that resistance always produces heat. Okay, so high resistance slash more heat produced is a possible reason for twisted wire. And finally, the type of power supply definitely has to be AC because this is electromagnetic induction. Okay, so we want to produce a changing magnetic field or in order to enable the cutting of magnetic flux, okay, which will produce your induced or eddy current. Okay, so when you look at this, the best choice obviously will be L. Okay, L will be your best choice because it has, uh, you know, a ceramic top plate, the material of the plant is ferromagnetic, the coil of the wire is twisted, and the type of power supply is AC. Okay, next. Again, transformer question. We really can't run far from this. Lah. Okay, so calculate the output voltage. Uh, I'm not going to show you the working in this because we've already answered the same question, same type of question in the previous question. So I'm just going to give you the answer. The output voltage, the answer will be 12 volts. The input power, okay, uh, you're given the voltage in the current over here. The input power should be 48 watts. And finally, calculate the output current flow. Okay, in a bulk label V and a uh, 10 volt and 36 watts. Okay, you should be able to get uh four amps. Okay. Next, we come to the Putra Jaya question. Okay, 11.1, 11.2 shows two types of dynamos with different number of turns of coil. Okay, again, as you can see here, no battery. So most likely it's electromagnetic induction again. But the interesting thing about this question is the Malay is asking a different thing from the English. And since we are we haven't talked about this, Faraday's law, let me give you the definition for Faraday's law. Okay, Faraday's law states that the magnitude, uh, magnitude of induced EMF is directly proportional proportional to the rate of cutting, sorry, to the rate of change. OK, 
okay, of magnetic flux. Okay, the magnitude of induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Basically, the more cutting of magnetic flux you can do, the bigger the induced EMF. Okay, which is Faraday's law. Okay, uh, so using diagram 11.1 .1 and 11.2, compare the strength of the magnet, number of turns of coil, and brightness of the lamp. So let's take a look. Now, I guess the magnet is the same, okay, because it doesn't really show me that uh, the magnet is different. Oh no, how many magnet bars are there? Yeah, the magnet bars are the same. Right, it looks like the same. Okay, the strength of the magnet, 11.1 .1 equals to 11.2. The number of turns of the coil, okay, take a look here. You know what, let me rub it off. Take a look here, and of course, take a look here. Obviously, 11.2 has more than 11.1. .1. Okay, so the number of turns will be 11.1 .1 is less than 11.2. Brightness of the lamp, the lines actually represent the brightness. Lah. Okay, so we will have 11.1 .1 is less than 11.2. Okay, state the relationship between the number of turns of the coil and the brightness of the lamp. The bigger the number of turns, the bigger the brightness. And therefore, the number of turns of coil and the magnitude of the current produced. So, bigger the number of turns, bigger the magnitude, which is in line with Faraday's law. Okay, a bigger induced current is because of a bigger, uh, bigger cut of magnetic flux lah, or bigger rate. <laughs> okay, uh, of change of magnetic flux. Okay, uh, again, <laughs> induction cooker. Okay, induction cooker eleven point three. And so, using appropriate physics concepts, explain the modifications that need to be done to heat up the pot faster. Okay, and here you give, you are given characteristics of the base of the pot. Okay, number of turns in the coil, magnitude of the current flows in the coils, and the type of current. Now, this is very similar to the previous question. Okay, very similar to the previous question. Uh, hold on, I'll come back to this question. I just realized that I missed this question. But um, but actually, if you think about it, explain how the induction cooker functions. I've actually given the answer over here. Lah. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, talk about the eddy current, talk about uh the you know the, the production of the induced EMF, etc. etc. Okay, so actually I probably won't answer this because we've already talked about this in the previous question. Okay, so Question is pretty similar to the previous question. Characteristics of the base of the pot, it should be made of a ferromagnetic material. Okay, we discussed in the previous question. Number of turns of coil, if you've been following the discussion, bigger number of turns of coil so that you can cut more magnetic flux. Magnitude of current should be bigger. Okay, bigger magnitude of current. Okay, and then of course the type of current flow. Lah. Okay, type of current flow will be AC, also discussed in the previous question. I guess the only thing you can do is to make this a five-point uh, answer. You need to talk about two characteristics. Lah. Okay, one is that it is ferromagnetic. Okay, if you were looking at the previous question, nah, okay, it's uh, ferromagnetic and... Uh, oh, this is the top plate, so we cannot talk about the pen. <laughs> okay, but the ferromagnetic part is definitely correct. Lah. The pot itself... Nah, Okay, has to be a, a ferromagnetic pot. Uh, I guess another one that you can also say is that it has a, it's a good heat conductor. Okay, so that you know you can cook the the food uh, more efficiently lah. Okay, the uh, to heat up the pot faster, the pot can you know heat up faster. Low specific capacity is also another possible uh, answer for this. So a lot of these answers are pretty similar to the same the question that we were answering previously. So I won't really uh, give you the answer in this part. Lah. Okay, the next question comes to us from Selangor set 1. Okay, and this is a case where you are given a power supply. And so this is Fleming's left-hand rule, which is the one force on the current carrying conductor. So it's a different question now. Okay, <laughs> enough of electromagnetic induction. Lah. Okay. So let's take a look at this question. First one is, what is the meaning of a catapult field? So a catapult field is a resultant okay, magnetic field due to the interaction between 
the magnetic field of the permanent magnet and the magnetic field from a current carrying conductor. Okay, this is a pretty long, this one. Lah. Okay, compare the reading of the emitter, angle of deflection, and the strength of the magnetic field. So, let's take a look at this. Okay, the angle of deflection. Lah. Oh, reading of the emitter. Okay, reading of the emitter, if we take a look at 11.1, 11.2, Obviously, 11.1 has a smaller reading because it's only middle and 11.2 has a bigger reading. So, 11.1 is smaller than 11.2. The angle of deflection. Okay, look at the deflection over here. Look at this angle. And look at this angle. Obviously, 11.2 is bigger. So, same thing. 11.1 is smaller than 11.2. Okay, let's talk about the strength of the magnetic field. Um, if you take a look at this, the strength of the magnetic field should be the same because it has the same number of magnets. Okay, so the strength of the magnetic field will be 11.1 .1 equals to 11.2. Now, relate the reading of the emitter with the angle of deflection. If you notice, the reading and the, the angle has the same direction. So, the bigger the reading of the emitter, the bigger the angle of deflection, this one really there is no cause and effect. Okay. Uh, I feel that if you write it one way or the other, it doesn't really make uh, a difference. Lah. Make a deduction regarding the relationship between magnitude of current and the force. Okay, this one very important. The magnitude of current must come first and then the force. Okay, come second. So the bigger the magnitude of current, the bigger the force. Okay, on the current carrying conductor. So you cannot write it the other way around. Okay, diagram 11.3 shows two types of motor, namely a brushed motor, okay, and a brushless motor. Okay, explain the similarities uh, and the differences, okay, between the brush motor and the brushless motor. Actually, this is, uh, this uh, question, the answer for this can be found in your textbook, okay, but uh, let's talk about the similarities first. Lah. So, the similarities, both have a magnet and coil. Okay, and then another one is it uses magnetic force okay, to produce rotation. Okay, so these are the similarities between the brush and the brushless motor. Let's talk about the differences. Huh? So the differences in this matter, okay, uh, usually differences, we would write it in a table. Okay, not necessary, but if you can write it in a table, it is uh, much better. Okay, so a brush motor and a brushless motor. Uh, the first difference uh, is that a brush motor has a stationary magnet. Okay, uh, with rotating coil. Manakala, a brushless motor is the other way around. Okay, it's a stationary coil. The coil remains stationary, but the magnet with rotating magnet. Okay, this is the first difference. Let me do this properly. Yeah? Okay. Secondly, <clears throat> um, it produces sparks. Because brush, ma, okay, produces sparks at the commutator okay you can see the commutator uh at the, this one lah. okay it produces sparks at the commutator and then of course in the brushless motor it does not produce sparks okay at the commutator etc etc okay third one uh it is noisy a brushless brush motor is very noisy okay noisy when in operation Okay, uh, brushless is not noiseless. Uh. Definitely got noise. Lah. Okay, we would say less noisy. Okay, when in operation. Okay, and maybe just one last one. 
uh, it has carbon brush. Okay, uh, that produces friction, which is really the main feature lah, okay, of a brush motor. On the color, <laughs> normal pun brushless. Okay, it has no carbon brush, okay, no brush, therefore no friction. And that's a good thing. Lah. Okay, so why do people still use brush motor? I guess because it's cheaper than the brushless one. Uh, but the brushless one obviously lasts longer, although it will be more expensive. Lah. Okay. All right, 11.4 shows a simple homopolar motor consisting of a magnet, a battery, and a conductor. Now, the interaction between the magnetic field from the electric current in the conductor and the magnetic field from the permanent magnet produces a force which causes the conductor to rotate okay, around the battery. Okay, so suggest modifications that can be made to the homopolar motor so that the conductor can spin faster. Okay, and then your uh, this one is given in terms of type of material, one, characteristics of material of the magnet, two, type of material of the conductor, three, characteristics of the conductor, four, and characteristics of the battery. So all five are given over here. So you have to give one, 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 one. Okay. So this is very, uh, this is very situation specific. Lah. Means, you know, homopolar motor is a very, very uh, specific situation. Uh, I think I will post the link. Uh, in the description so that you can watch a video regarding this uh, homopolar motor. But let's talk about the answer. So the type of, let's talk about the magnet first. Okay, let's talk about the magnet. So the type of material, okay, type of material, okay, is neodymium. Okay, it's a very specific magnet, lah. neodymium. And the reason for this, okay, is so that it produces a stronger magnetic field. Okay, our standard one uh, is not uh, is not so strong. Like neodymium uh, is a much, much stronger uh, type of magnet. Okay, I think the one that is given here uh, doesn't really mention. Lah. Okay, second one is the characteristics of the magnet. Okay, I guess you can say more number. Okay, more number of magnets. And you can also use the same reason, okay, to produce a stronger magnetic field. Because ultimately, stronger magnetic field means more force. <clears throat> okay, next. Let's talk about the conductor. Okay, so the conductor, okay, type of material. Okay, type of material is copper. Okay, and copper is usually associated with low resistance. Lah. Oh, sorry. Resistance. So low resistance wire means current flows easily. There's less heat. Less heat means there's less uh, wastage. Lah. Okay, and then the characteristics. You can say that uh, thick, thick uh, conductor. Okay, diameter of wire is big with the same reason as well, okay? So that it will be low resistance. Finally, the characteristics of the battery, okay, the battery should have low internal resistance. Okay, and having a low internal resistance means more current can flow because when you have more current, you will have, um, um, a stronger magnetic field which causes the interaction and gets a bigger catapult field. It is the catapult field that makes this coil, uh, makes the conductor rotate around the battery. Okay, so uh, yeah, watch the link in the description uh, and to show you uh, what a neodymium battery, sorry, what a homopolar motor uh, looks like. Okay, let's move on to the next question, which is from Solango set two. Uh, <laughs> bar magnet being pushed into solenoid. Notice that there's no battery once again. So this is obviously electromagnetic induction. There you go. What is meant by electromagnetic induction given over there? Compare the number of turns of the solenoid. Quite obvious that 11.1 is more than 11.2. 
Okay, and then secondly, the size of the deflection of the galvanometer. Okay, so the deflection of the galvanometer. Okay, galvanometer, remember that the more right or the more left it is, okay, because the zero is in the center. So the more left it is, okay, it means the more right or the more left it is, means it is a bigger deflection. Okay, be very careful of the galvanometer. It doesn't mean that it is nearer to the right. Huh? It means it's a bigger deflection. No, huh? the middle is always zero. So 11.1 .1 has a bigger deflection than 11.2. The rate of cutting of magnetic flux. Okay, everybody, rate. More cutting means bigger rate. Okay, and so if you remember from the previous, previous questions, obviously 11.1 .1 will have a much bigger uh, rate. Lah. Okay, 11.1 .1 has a bigger rate of cutting than 11.2. So state the relationship between the number of turns and the rate. The bigger the number of turns, the bigger the rate. Okay, to make a deduction regarding the relationship between the rate and the magnitude okay, of induced current. This one, follow the order. The bigger the rate of cutting a magnetic flux, the bigger the magnitude of the induced current produced. The good thing about this question is not asking you what whose law is involved here. But in case they do ask, remember that this particular relationship, the second one over here, the rate of cutting a magnetic flux and the magnitude of induced current produced is Faraday's law. Okay, which we discussed in the previous question. Okay, shows an ideal transformer. Name the type of transformer. Since the primary has more than the secondary, so this is a step down. Okay, step down transformer. <clears throat> okay, then explain how current is induced. Oh no, okay. Okay, tada, the answer. So, alternating current flows through the primary coil, produces a changing magnetic field. The magnetic flux in the primary coil is linked to the secondary coil through a soft iron core. Okay, so the link is there. Lah. And so that link causes the change of magnetic flux. Okay. Uh, in the secondary coil, which produces an induced EMF. So you see where we're going here? We're using the same words again. Changing or cutting of magnetic flux produces induced EMF, induced EMF, produce induced current. Okay. Now 11.4 shows the structure of a simple current dynamo to light up a bulb. It's very similar to the dynamo question that we saw just now. Now state, uh, suggest modifications that can be made to the dynamo so that the light bulb lights up brighter. Okay, and you're given how many characteristics? Number one, characteristics of the magnet. Number two, characteristics of the iron core, wire coil, power of the bulb, and ways to produce brighter light. Okay, so kind of a lot over here. So first of all, let's talk about the characteristics of the magnet. You can use the same answer as we did just now. Okay, you can use a stronger magnet. Okay, or you can use a neodymium magnet. Okay, which has a much bigger magnetic field. Okay, iron core, this is very standard. Okay, use soft iron core. And the reason for the soft iron core, uh, usually we will say easy to magnetize and demagnetize. Okay, this is usually the answer that comes together with uh, soft iron core. Okay, uh, another one, uh, I mean, if you don't talk about the, this one, you can also talk about laminated iron core. This is another possible answer. Okay, laminated iron core. Okay, and laminated iron core, the reason for this will be to reduce eddy current which produces heat lah, which we don't want okay but you if you're going to use either one of these answers okay you cannot mix the reasons up soft iron core the reason is easy to magnetize the magnetize laminated iron core the reason is to reduce eddy current you cannot mix and match lah, okay it has to be matched correctly okay let's talk about the wire coil okay the wire coil uh, over here obviously you need to have more turns lah. okay this is very standard Okay, more turns okay, of wire coil. Okay, another one is uh, big diameter, which we talked about just now. Okay, big diameter of wire. 
big diameter of wire we spoke about just now is to reduce the resistance okay or less resistance more turns of wire uh, more turns of wire is usually to have um, compared to more cutting lah. okay more cutting of magnetic flux okay very standard one stuff okay power of the bulb <laughs> i'm running out of space right okay power of the bulb should be high okay high power okay power of bulb is high because you have a high power bulb you have a brighter light okay brighter light can be produced okay and of course what is a way to produce a brighter light okay if you think about it if you want to produce a brighter light then obviously the wheel you have to spin faster lah. okay so turn the wheel faster okay and the reason for this is again having a brighter light is because of a bigger rate okay of magnet of uh, the cutting of magnetic flux okay so to increase the same thing lah, the cutting of magnetic Plugs. okay after five questions you notice that after a while uh, the questions really cannot run very far you always have to talk about the same thing so even if you can't remember everything in detail try to get the gist of it because there's a very high chance that uh that you know these kind of answers are most likely what you need in order to answer the exam later all right one last question to go this is from smka I think it's set one or set three, I can't remember. But again, we're having the dynamo situation again. Okay, the question is the phenomenon is known as electromagnetic induction. Of course, the first question is what is the meaning of electromagnetic induction? If we if you've been following, this seems to be a very, very popular definition. I don't forget this. Lah. Okay, explain the working principle of a bicycle dynamo that causes a light bulb to light up. Okay, ta-da! And this is the answer. When the wheel spins, the permanent magnet rotates. Okay, so obviously there. And then because the magnet is rotating, it will produce a cutting of magnetic flux by the fixed coil. Okay, so the coil here is fixed. The magnet is the one that's rotating. Okay, so when there's a cutting of magnetic flux, you have the induced EMF, induced EMF, you will have the induced current flowing and then the bulb will light up. Okay, next question. Diagram 10.2 is just a transformer used in a microwave oven. Again, Transformer question. Okay, so the number of turns on the primary coil and the secondary coil are 300 and 2750 respectively. Calculate the output voltage. Uh, this one is number of turns. Input voltage is given as 240. I'm not going to show you the working, but I can. I think you can work it out on your own. But you should be able to get the answer of VO equals to 2200 volts. Okay, and then transformer efficiency for microwave ovens is 82.5%. Calculate the output current, okay, if the input power is 1,200. First of all, if you need to calculate the output current, you have to calculate the output power. Okay, so use the efficiency formula which you talked about in the first question. Okay, I'm just going to give you the output power. So I'm going to call it PO. The output power you get is 990 watts. Okay, and then you use the P equals to VI uh, formula. The V you've gotten as 2,200 over here. So when you calculate, the output current will be 0 0.45 amps. Okay, a much, much uh, lower output current. Okay, next, diagram 10.4 shows a turbine used in a hydropower plant. Okay, so the water flows and causes the turbine to turn. And in the turbine, there are these three magnets over... Uh, sorry, there's these three coils over here. Okay, uh, sorry, not sure. I'm not sure whether the coil is turning or the magnet is turning. But either way, definitely going to be cutting off magnetic flux. Okay, so as an engineer, you are asked to suggest the model of a turbine that can produce optimal output power. Okay, this is what we want. To produce optimal output power so state the reasons for your choice as always lah. okay strength of magnet again definitely this one and then the reason for this will be stronger magnetic field okay it's pretty standard number of turns remember you don't want to write the number you want to write high or low okay so we want a high number of turns 
because the reason is more cutting <laughs> okay or magnetic flux okay after a while this kind of questions it gets very boring okay because especially if you know okay. material aluminium or copper at this point you kind of know that we're going towards you so we want copper why copper again okay low resistance Okay, diameter of coil of wire. Now, we know that the diameter of the coil of wire should be a thick one, a big diameter. But in terms of SWG, okay, it is a low SWG. So, important thing to remember, uh, the diameter, the big diameter equals to small SWG. Okay, so you want to choose either SWG5 or SWG6. Lah. 5 is better than 6. But because we are going for you, we will have to choose 6. But when you write your answer in the table, okay, if you're given the choice for SWG, you need to write the answer low SWG. Don't write higher, bigger diameter. Although, yeah, I know, but the choices given to you here are SWG. So you have to follow. Okay, so remember this. If you want a big diameter, you need to have a small SWG. Okay, and so uh, you will get uh, you will get the, the answer you okay now aluminium and copper generally la generally aluminium and copper just one last thing before we leave uh have quite low resistance la okay in that sense okay uh and I was checking this on Google the other day the resistivity uh, the resistivity of uh of copper okay the resistivity of copper is about 1.62 times 10 to the power of 8 uh, ohm meter Manakala, the resistivity of aluminium is about 2.63 times 10 to the power 8 ohm uh, meter. So relatively small, uh, relatively low resistance in a sense, but still copper is a lower resistant material okay, compared to uh, aluminium. Okay, just something extra for you to know uh, in case this question comes up. Usually a uh, more... Uh, you know, a bigger difference with that copper and nichrom, lah, okay, or, you know, or copper and tungsten. Tungsten is very high resistivity, so copper is obviously the better choice because of its low resistance. Okay, and so this is the end of the series of videos. I uh, wish you all the best for your SPM, okay, and may you have success, <laughs> especially for your physics paper. Okay, take care everyone. Bye.